A federal judge's decision to overturn California's same-sex marriage ban has touched off local celebrations among gay rights activists, while Prop 8 proponents plan their appeal. First thing I did is scream and cheer. It was sitting in my living room, looked on the computer and saw it on Yahoo. And so, of course, first thing I did, reposted on Facebook. Every and the people voted. And now a judge has decided that up in San Francisco, he knows better than, the, than the, all the other millions of people that participate in the democratic process. <laughs> Dozens of people rallied here in Bakersfield on the corner of Stockdale Highway near Outback Steakhouse. Many held flags and signs that read, honk if you support gay marriage. Supporters of Prop 8, meantime, are vowing to fight the ruling with the same passion. And that fight is widely expected to head to the Supreme Court. 17 newsmakers now this morning. This was the first decision to strike down a gay marriage ban based on federal constitutional grounds. We have the leaders of both sides of the local debate. Ken Mettler headed up the local Prop 8 campaign. And Whitney Waddell is... And Whitney Waddell is a gay rights activist. They both join us live in studio this morning. Good morning to you both. Good morning. All right. So, Whitney, let's start first with you. Uh, gay marriages are still on hold, at least until a federal court hearing tomorrow. And there is at least some indication that while this appeal is ongoing, the gay marriages will not go forward. But if there is no such kind of appeal and no hold, would you be asking uh, Ann Barnett to resume gay marriages in Kern County? We would not ask Ms. Barnett to do anything that would violate the law. If there's a stay in force, then we will uh, stand by the stay. But if there is no stay, do you say? If there's forward? no stay, that would definitely be something we would want to approach her. She would be required to hand out uh, licenses, and um, we would expect her to do that just as she did back in 2008. And Ken, where do you think your folks go, the Proposition 8 sides go from here? Well, of course, we had uh, anticipated that this uh, would occur. We knew that this uh, case by this judge was uh, probably going to be adverse to uh, traditional marriage between one man and one woman. And so uh, the appeal is in order. It's going forward to the Ninth Circuit. Uh, and Ken, one of the fundamental arguments that was made here during the, the federal trial is that kids could be fundamentally harmed by being raised by a gay couple. They're damaged in some way. Do you mm -hmm. believe that to be true? Well, it's not what's best for society, and we've had two elections stating that marriage between one man and one woman should be the uh, way marriage is defined in California. That was with Prop 22. The majority of the folks there voted for it, uh, and also here with Prop 8. So what this is, is it's not a trial about the merits of marriage, and that's what this judge tried to do in San Francisco, but it's about the process, and the fact is we had a vote. The people voted in the state of California in this state to define marriage between one man and one woman. And that has occurred, and we modified our Constitution to take it to that level. However, an arrogant judge in San Francisco chose to, to basically make law to legislate from the bench. And, and Wendy, I'm going to give you a chance to respond to that. But what we've heard traditionally, though, from your opponents, Ken, is that isn't that fundamentally what the Constitution specifies, that we have judges in place to be a balance and check against the power of the people, the power of the president? That's what the Constitution says they should be doing? Well, you know, frankly, there's so many levels here. But this judge actually did not even follow the Constitution. First of all, the de definition of marriage is a state's rights issue. He's a federal judge. This was done by the proper methods. We, uh, you know, uh, Prop 8 was vetted even before it went out to the people. Its constitutionality had been attacked. And by making it a, a constitutional amendment, that prevented it from being attacked on constitutional grounds in the state of California. So our opponents had to go to the lanes to go to federal court and find a sympathetic judge in San Francisco to make this ruling. But this will ultimately end up in the Supreme Court of the United States. And Winnie, I want to give you a chance to respond. Well, there's so many things about this. First of all, people's rights should never be put to a vote. If it's a right, then everyone should have it and have it the same exact way. Um, it doesn't make sense to allow people to vote on people's rights. And we know from history that any time we have allowed people to vote on people's rights, they typically vote to take them away. This is why judges are in place to ensure that constitutional protections that were written more than 200 years ago continue to be enforced. It's absolutely important that we uh, continue to have equal protection of the law for everyone, regardless of how we feel about how they live. Whitney, one of the things that has come up often in this debate, though, is, is the question of choice, that you can't choose to be black or white, you can't choose to be man or woman. Those are constitutional discriminatory protections, but that people choose perhaps to be gay. Well, it's interesting because I haven't had a chance to read all 137 pages of the judge's order, but it is what I understand is a finding of facts, and he lists more than 80 
facts that now cannot be contravened at even at the appellate level. We're not going to change what the facts are. And one of those facts is that being gay is not a choice and that most people um, uh, are, are genetically predisposed or born to be uh, the sexual orientation that they have. And so it's not something that can necessarily be changed and is not necessarily something that's chosen. And so um, that fact will now be entered into the record for the appellate case for the Supreme Court. And regardless of whatever popular opinion might be, that's a fact. Ken, your, your response? Well, first of all, uh, this debate is not about someone's behavior. Homosexuality is not a right. It is a, it is a behavior. And what we're saying is that marriage is a basic institution. Society has the right to choose how you define this most basic building block of our society. And frankly, when this does go to the United States Supreme Court, there's a fresco there. And that fresco has Moses, the lawgiver. So our Constitution is rooted in things and traditions and in uh, mores that are much deeper than just the last 200 years, in fact. It's a millennium of institutions and traditions and behaviors that we want to encourage in our society. So this is a deeper issue than just uh, what some of the contemporary people are saying today. And Winnie, just a few seconds, so I'll give you a chance to respond. Well, it's a fact. Some people are gay. And I guess the question we've always had is, when are you going to get over that? All right. Well, uh, we're going to leave it there. I, I appreciate you both coming in this morning. Ken Mettler, Whitney Waddell, both sides of the debate. Obviously, this debate will con to continue probably all the way up to the Supreme Court. Thanks for coming in this morning. The Proposition 8 was a voter-approved ban on gay marriage in California. It was overturned Wednesday by U.S. District Chief Judge Von Walker. And now a group who helped fund the ban is upset, saying an openly, openly gay judge decided this case. Von Walker is known as a Republican judge, but this conservative judge made a ruling Wednesday that was not popular with many conservatives who support Prop 8. We have a judge very arrogantly usurping the will of the people once again in the state of California. There's long been speculation about Walker's sexuality, although the judge has refused to address it himself. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, the chairwoman of the National Organization for Marriage, who helped fund Proposition 8, said the openly gay judge was substituting his views for those of the American people. But legal expert and attorney Milt Younger doesn't agree. Well, he doesn't have a vested interest in it at all. He's a judge. Uh, and again, as I said, each side had an opportunity to, to object to him and, and did not do that. Younger says the judge made findings of fact based on the due process clause of the Constitution, which says there must be a rational basis for discrimination. The judge said in his ruling that other than religion, there was no rational reason to discriminate against same-sex couples when it comes to marriage. And while conservative activist Ken Mettler is pro-Prop 8, he also doesn't believe the judge's sexuality was a conflict of interest. I would like to believe that our judges are beyond uh, their personal prejudices. Uh, he, I think it's more a factor of the environment where it was held. It's in San Francisco. For better or for worse, this case is far from over. Most expect it will eventually land before the Supreme Court. We spoke with attorney Milt Younger in Bakersfield today, who says Walker is considered a conservative judge and his sexuality is not an issue. Many have criticized the implication that it could be an issue with saying it's no different than if a deeply religious judge or one who had been divorced several times took on the case. Younger also says if the case makes it to the Supreme Court, he believes with Justice Anthony Kennedy as the swing vote that it will be hard for the court to overturn the ruling. Much of the opinion that this trial judge wrote was directed towards Kennedy and in fact he cited, as I understand it, uh, the two Kennedy opinions on the subject. I don't see how Kennedy can avoid uh, at this point um, finding that Prop 8 is unconstitutional. Younger says the judge made findings of fact based on many things including the due process clause of the Constitution which he says states there must be a rational basis for discrimination. The judge said in his ruling that other than religion there was no rational reason to discriminate against same-sex couples when it comes to marriage. And it's also important to note that the attorneys defending Proposition 8 never objected to Walker taking the case and say they do not plan to bring up the question of Judge Walker's sexuality during the appeal.